what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel so in today's video i do want to go over the low altitude skills i would almost say these are guaranteed to end up showing in a summit in the future so like might as well get prepared for them now and at least you are ready to get the highest score possible i am going to go over my favorite plan i would recommend running on them and also the best part set for the low altitude skills now similar to the other classes though, the plane category itself is probably going to be one of the weirdest classes in this game. I do think at this point we can all most likely agree that many of the planes are probably going to be awful. I would even go as far as saying many of them are probably not even going to be usable, or at least most likely not going to be a fun experience if you are running them. So finding a decent plane that you can do in the low altitudes is probably going to be incredibly necessary. That way you can actually get the highest score you possibly can. So one thing I did notice though is flying some of the planes like for example the Beer Cat. It's not going to be a terrible plane but let's be honest the handling on this thing is awful. And for some odd reason I don't know why but the planes in this game just do not feel right. Like the planes in Motorfest to me honestly do not feel all that great especially compared to the Crew 2 before. I really don't want to say this, but I do feel like the planes basically went backwards. In that game, they were going to be pretty dang fun to fly, like going into like an aerobatics or even like a low altitude, you probably enjoyed doing the planes, but in this game, I would say if one of these do show up in a summit, which I would almost guarantee they most likely will, I would say a lot of people are definitely not going to like them. But if you are wondering though, guys, the best plane I can recommend in this game to use for legitimately everything is going to be the slick aircraft this thing is absolutely incredible it's also going to be very easy to run plus you do not have to mess with the pro settings on it at all and for some odd reason it legit flies better than every other plane in this game now similar to the other classes in the game though there's also going to be one specific set you definitely want for a low altitude i would also say to this point it's probably not going to be very shocking it is of course going to be the score breaker set right here I am also going to have a full 70% booster on this thing. Keep in mind though, if you guys do not have that, you can run random gold parts with a skill to fix a stat on each one. And on top of that though, you can also have some of your legend points on skilled. Now I do want to mention by the way, I'm also going to be running a regular gold part set on my plane. At least for the first try this time, also running skilled on every single part. Which by the way is also going to be a 70% boost. On top of the driver points also being active. Now, one thing I can admit though is you do not have to necessarily have a score breaker set on your plane. But at the same time though, if these are going to show up in a summit, which I definitely would say they most likely will. You are definitely going to want to be ready to at least be able to do them and get the highest score possible. Now we all do know most of the planes in this game are probably going to be terrible. For example, right now I have been testing out other planes on different like skills or like even events. And I have to say... They are really going to be absolutely awful, even running any of the other planes besides the Slick. So if you guys are looking for like a great overall plane, I would definitely recommend trying this one. Now currently running a regular part set, I got around 21,000 points. Now I did want to spawn right back into the exact same low altitude here, running a lovely Scorebreaker set. Now I do know a Scorebreaker set is going to make a huge difference in basically every way. We can see this running one on like a buoy smashing or like even doing a slalom. But my goodness guys, having one of these sets active on a low altitude is absolutely insane. It also brings me back to like the Crew 2 era where basically having this set was probably going to guarantee you like the easiest skill run ever. Now we do know many of the summits are probably going to have some of these skills show up. So having a good set like that really is going to make a difference. Now what's kind of insane though is even running a score breaker you do not have to be perfect. For example, right now with 20 seconds left, I've already beat my other score, which does obviously account for having a better score in the summits as well. Like getting around a 10 to 15,000 point difference is going to help tremendously in a summit, and you are most likely going to notice a fairly big score difference. Now, if you are wondering, by the way, what is going to be the best way and like what are some of the tips I can do to actually get a higher score in a low altitude? So for this, I would say the number one thing here is probably going to be the plane you do indeed choose. And of course, number two right after that is going to be the route. Now, similar to many of these slaloms, you definitely can take a different way in them. But I have to admit, guys, a lot of the routes for these low altitudes are probably going to be fairly simple. The biggest thing with a low altitude is you do want to keep the plane as low as possible. And of course, doing that, you're most likely going to have to get close to the road or even close to like the water like I am here. 
That way it's basically going to alleviate you running into something or like a car, which by the way can indeed happen on the roads, but luckily on the flip side of that though, there's not going to be that many low altitudes in this game. So at least if you are running a scorebreaker, you're basically going to be good to go on them. And depending on which way some of these might be going, guys, going on the road is not a terrible idea. You can also most likely travel on like dirt roads and stuff like that with basically no traffic. But if you are wondering though, you can still get a 3 times multiplier not running into traffic as well. So at least all you really have to do is have a scorebreaker set. Now one of my favorite things about a low altitude compared to an escape is the fact that you do not have to be perfect in them. And luckily you also do not have to worry about AI basically crashing into you. And if you are running a plane that is most likely not going to be fairly stable, it's probably going to make that low altitude that much harder. So I would definitely recommend trying out the slick aircraft. But the other thing on this though is you would definitely want to have a scorebreaker set on your plane. You could easily run a plane with like random go parts and like having these skilled on each part. But having a scorebreaker guys, you really can be pretty much unperfect on the entire run. You also do not have to have a 3 times multiplier. Which is kind of funny considering you can get a really high score in a summit, even if you do not have a perfect 3 times multiplier active. So I would definitely recommend going after that score breaker with these planes. And then of course the last one is when you are doing a low altitude, look for the biggest open areas you can find. Whether it's going to be like a big open road or like even a dirt road. And one of my personal favorites is going to be finding like a river. Or of course trying to get to like the water as quickly as possible. Luckily, there's not going to be any boats and stuff like there was in the Crew 2 in the way, so you basically can jump in and go as fast as you possibly can. Now, there is one thing I did want to mention in this video when it does come to going over the low altitude skills. Funnily enough, there's also going to be one more trick you can do to get an even higher score than before. Of course, on that though, it is going to make them a lot more difficult, at least trying to fly the planes like that, but... If you guys are wondering how does someone get 50,000 points on a low altitude, funnily enough all you will have to do to do that is obviously you will need a score breaker set, but you will also have to fly inverted close to the ground compared to before, which by the way doing that looks insanely weird, but when flying inverted on some of the low altitudes I was getting almost a thousand points per second compared to around like 850 or so, and you're also getting around a 3.6 times multiplier in them. So it is going to make a fairly big difference of around maybe eight to 10,000 points, which of course, if you are doing a summit, probably is going to guarantee you that 155K. And of course, that way you don't have to jump back into them. But if you guys are looking for the highest score possible, the way to do that, definitely pick the slick 360 HP and run a score breaker set. And all you will then have to do is fly inverted and you will get an incredibly high score.